Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day. I am here playing with some stuff from Particle. And uh, you may notice I have some tape on these boards. And the reason for that is that there are some uh, QR codes and some serial numbers under here that I don't want to reveal publicly. But these are three boards. A uh, couple of them are the same. These are two Xenon boards and this is an Argon board. All for Particle.io. And so let me explain. The idea is I've been looking for some different platforms to make code and distribute it when I want to have IoT devices outside of my network. And um, there's some different things you can do with the ESP32s, my beloved ESP32, ESP8266. And uh, I'm just not convinced that they're ready for prime time yet, especially for getting a device out there that's going to be on someone else's network and all that stuff. So I've been looking at some alternatives and I've played with a few Azure things and didn't love those. And I stumbled across particle.io. And so um, basically what it is, is these boards all form a mesh network. And so you have this one, which is the Argon, and this is a Wi-Fi board. And then these other ones, these Xenons, are able to connect via a mesh network to each other and to this Argon board. And the Argon board eventually sends it up to the cloud. And uh, there is another version of it, I think it's called the Boron, that is uh, uses a cell network instead of Wi-Fi. And so um, I have some ideas with these. Now, why would I want something like this? Um, for one, if you are talking about putting a device like this, like let's say you are doing a warehouse or you're doing a school or some kind of big distributed property, uh, it's really awesome if these devices can talk to each other. And more importantly, you need to be able to update your code. You're going to get things out there and you're going to decide, hey, I need to change this update interval or hey, the Wi-Fi password changed. And I need to be able to go out there and update these things without physically sending somebody to the property or physically expecting somebody to walk around with a laptop and update these devices. And that's where this stuff really shines. And so um, by themselves, these things just basically act like standalone Arduinos. And when they're paired to this, then all of a sudden you can connect it to something like Particle.io or Azure or something like that. So before we get too far into it, um, this is going to be a lengthy video. I might even break it up into two. This is a new, uh, I have opened it, but this is another new Xenon board. And I want to show you a little bit of the experience. It comes with very, very nice packaging. Uh, a little card in here to tell them what you're building. And then uh, when you open up this bag here, these are very cool, like waxy paper bags that have a a Ziploc thing on there. It comes with a breadboard. A little hard to get out. It comes with a bunch of parts or a couple of parts and a breadboard and a USB cable. And one of the things I like, like this is your standard eBay um, breadboard and this is the one that came with Particle and you can just tell the printing is bolder, the plastic is harder and whiter and the numbers are clearer and you know just everything about this one feels quality where this one just I mean it's not that it doesn't do the job but this one just feels cheap and uh, so then they come with a couple of resistors and uh, this is an IR re or this is a yeah it's a it's an IR a photo cell basically an LED three millimeter LED uh, USB micro USB cable and in the next bag you're going to get the particle xenon now I have opened this up and put the tape on it but essentially these boards are roughly equivalent to an ESP32. They have uh, additional flash on them. They have Bluetooth 5 there. Um, they have their own cryptography chip. There's 20 um, GPIO pins, six analog, eight PWM. There's you know serial UART, SPI, I squared C, all the kind of stuff that you would want to see on a basic board like this. And so, I have a couple of ideas beyond just doing something like a warehouse. So picture this. Picture you are at something like a school and you want to be able to have 
an interactive game show thing that works with the cloud. But you don't want to deal with the school's Wi-Fi. You don't want to deal with taking, you know, every one of these things and connecting them. And, and who knows how, how you're going to accept the terms and agreement, you know, and stuff like that with this thing. And so what you do is you bring your own hotspot and you bring your own this or you bring the boron that has the cell phone connection. And basically you're able to take these devices and put them all over the place and they're their own self-contained network. You don't have to worry about the network IT guy having to approve it. You've got your own mesh network and you can play your game or you can take your data. Same thing with uh, with imagine being at a restaurant and we'll, we'll stick with the trivia theme. So let's say you show up to restaurants and you do trivia night and you want every person to be able to buzz in A, B, C, or D. That's the type of thing that I'm using this for, to where, you know, I bring my own connection with me, I bring my own devices, they form their own network, they're automatically paired, and I can just run my system without having to worry about the network of the restaurant itself. And so that's where this thing comes really in handy, and what I've been messing around with. So. I'm going to show you a little bit of the software. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it, but I'm going to show you a little bit about how the software works. Okay, so my screen will be cropped a little weird for this video, but that's okay. Uh, you'll get the idea. Basically, what I did was I scanned the QR code on each of these devices and registered them to my account. I basically adopted them, which is real similar to what you would do if you were doing something like a ubiquity access point or something like that. So I adopted them to my account and I told them which mesh network they were sharing, which all of my Xenons are sharing the mesh network of the Argon. But basically, this is going to look super familiar to you. This is, you're using your normal code, you've got your setup, you're declaring your LEDs. The only thing that's different is that we are declaring a particle function using this method particle.function. So we are um, giving it a name and we're using that to call an internal function. And basically, we're turning an LED on or off based on what command is issued in here and so very simply put if you come in here it automatically detected that i put that function in one of my sketches and it shows up here and in i'm clicked on the the argon at this point so basically i can come in here and i can type in the word on and click call and it's going to turn the led on it did turn the led on pretty much instantly on my argon because that's the one i pushed it for so if you come over here to the different examples there's uh there's different ones there's basically a publish and a subscribe which are a lot like um mqtt if you've ever used those and you can use mqtt but this is basically all handled by their servers and there's another thing you can do that's kind of interesting is you can have function variables so you'll see here we're declaring particle variables and basically what that means is that these variables are available to be read here and from there you can basically get the information from one of your particle de devices and ship it over to another one or broadcast it out to all of them there's all kinds of interactive things you can do as you declare these if you think of your entire Arduino is being global, you can have this super global concept of sharing these variables across all of your devices and getting this information across all of your devices. And so that's really what makes this powerful. You can force over the air updates and essentially like you just come over here and you make sure you're on the right device and you click this and I'm uploading this code right now. It takes a little bit longer than doing it on a local Arduino IDE and the reason for that is because it the Argon device keeps running while the code is being updated so you're you're getting minimal downtime basically it's going to keep running the old sketch until you fully upload the new sketch and then it's going to reboot into the new sketch and so it's a very cool platform I wish I could show you some of the things that I'm doing internally but just the idea of having all these devices connected and the same code that you use on this one, you can just come over and you can upload it to all of your devices. You can come over and just send that code to all your Argons, all your Xenons, and distribute one set of code to many devices very quickly. And so this is a very cool platform. Now, the scary thing is, 
what happens if particle goes out of business or something like that and um i don't know i mean that, that's pretty much the deal with any of these companies but what i can tell you is that the forums are very active people are having actual discussions it's not just a bunch of people asking questions that, and then a bunch of crickets there's people actually giving detailed answers to questions and sharing code on github and doing all that kind of stuff and then the other thing i like about it is that this hardware is not locked to just these just the particle service so you can program it offline with the regular ide you can connect it to azure you can connect it to blink you can do all that kind of stuff so I'm going to continue developing this. I, like I said, I have some stuff for schools, for restaurants to use overseas and things like that that I'm going to be doing with these devices. I have four of them right now. And uh, in my week or so of playing with them, I am extremely impressed with how this works and, and, and actually being able to push out code. And it's super flexible. I love it. So thanks for watching.